We are so pleased to see you. Hi, welcome to Festival in My House and Yours. My name is Megan and we, you'll meet the others in a moment, are part of Girl Gang Manchester. Girl Gang Manchester are a collective of artists, activists, academics and party instigators. We believe that everyone is an artist, popular culture can be profound and politics and feminism are for everybody. We also believe that anyone who's been to any of our events is automatically part of our gang. So if that makes you one of us now, whether you want to be or not, you best come inside. You can come in because this Christmas we've bubbled with Manchester International Festival to present A Woman's Place is in the Home. I'm going to be guiding you throughout the house and throughout the day as we gear up for our Christmas party tonight. We're going to be celebrating and subverting the political and emotional landscapes of domestic spaces for modern women. We're going to be getting curious about the weight that everyday objects and spaces can carry. Now normally, Girl Gang are all about bringing people offline and into the real world to share experiences and create connections, often in quite a tactile way. So all this digital stuff is pretty new for us, but we realised pretty early on into 2020 that what can seem like a limitation is in fact an opportunity. And as we're all about intimacy, then what is more intimate than bringing you into our homes, into our kitchens, our showers, our beds? So at a time when so many of us have been stuck at home, we're going to be finding the creativity in domestic drudgery, spirituality in the shower. We're going to be creating an ode to this unique 2020 moment for black British hairdressing. We are going to be bemoaning the gender divisions that still exist within modern heterosexual relationships. We're going to be mourning what we miss, celebrating what we do have, toasting our regrets and dancing it all out because what's it all worth about dancing? Sound good? Okay, let's meet the rest of the gang. I think Shona's just got back from the school run and she's putting the wash on to make sure all our glittery garments are ready for this evening's party. Let's go and see her. How to read care instructions. Soak yourself. For as long as advised. Put the kettle on. Have a brew. Centre yourself for once. Avoid social media drama. a little bit tricky but experts generally agree it refers to either pizza or cake and the sharing thereof so whichever you prefer really what does your care label say see i'm looking for the magic in the mundane i'm also looking for the sock that matches this one and the pair of pants that make my ass look amazing that went in the washing basket a year ago and never came back out but today i'm looking for the magic in the mundane i am looking for the wish in the wash i am trying to find love i'm trying i'm trying to find the love in the laundry so every time i pick up a sock from the floor where it's been dropped right next to the basket it's a valentine's day card this shirt and the used tissue i pulled out of his pocket there are a dozen red roses delivered to your door box of chocolates a bottle of champagne dedication on the radio Every time I put on fresh bedding and dive into clean white sheets to make snow angels, it's a Christmas present wrapped up in a giant bow. From me to me. From me 
So then, don't get me wrong, I'm no surrendered housewife. The grey period knickers on the radiator do not constitute a white flag. Do not turn the camera around to show them that. The thing is though, housework is fucking boring. So at least when I think of it as a radical act of care, it doesn't feel like as much of a waste of time. Time? That's what they promised us, wasn't it? Automation is emancipation. Chuck in a load, turn the dial, and you've got the rest of the day to smash the patriarchy. But the thing is, when they put the washing machines inside our houses, sneaky bastards, separated us from each other with brick walls and double glazing. We used to go down to the river. We used to bleach our whites on village greens. We used to hang up washing lines between terraced houses. And woe betide anyone who tried to take a shortcut through the billowing linen across cobbled streets. For the first time in human history, washing is now a solitary activity. There isn't anyone to share the load. When women used to wash together, we laughed and danced and told dangerous stories. And the work was backbreaking and it took all bloody day and I am not suggesting that we go back. But sometimes I think we forget what we gave up for the convenience of a quick wash. I don't know. Maybe we can still have it all. Let's go girls.
Today is uh, the 17th chocolate in my advent calendar, our 49th day in tier three or higher, and approximately the 100th day in a row that I have worn jogging bottoms. Despite having made the conscious effort to stop buying clothes around two years ago, the day that lockdown 2.0 hit, I just ordered seven pairs off the internet stack. It seemed like the only reasonable response and uh, a pretty good investment for the times in which we currently live. But tonight, I will not be wearing loungewear from dusk till dawn because tonight, Matthew, we're having a party. We are gonna be aligning our webcams, synchronizing our stereos for a socially distanced disco. So I'm gonna get dressed up. Pink and jeans and a nice top. Nah, it's Christmas, so I'm going to be going all out. I'm going to be wearing head to toe sequins and a disco ball earring. Jenny's upstairs exfoliating her legs and Justina's doing her hair. Pretty sure she's in there for the long haul, so let's get this through into her. Oh yeah. No, oh, thank you, yeah. Oh, that's great, it's huge as well. Mm. See you in a few hours, yeah? Right, let's do this. Mm. Oh, curls, coils and kinks. What you've done for me, what you're doing for me, what you'll go on to do for me. I miss people. I'm remarkably grand in my own company. But then the energy hits me and I just need to bounce off another human. <laughs> my poor flatmates putting up with my Red Bull butt. The inside time has been a trip and a half. I've had nothing but time to look over myself, see what I wanted to keep and chuck, behaviours, attitudes, what I will and will no longer accept, realisations, the realisation of neglect of self, my hair love. Oh curls, coils and kinks, what you've done for me, what you're doing for me, what you will go on to do for me. My love journey started like most black British women. Chemical burns. Watching auntie part and slather my hair, crinkly gloved fingers deftly and firmly suppressing the foliage from forehead to nape, slathering the off-white through my head, ensuring the infusion the sharpest pinches all over my scalp, the cranium burning brighter than the sickest part I have served, the waiting, the wiggling, the weeping, the laughing, not from me, from the aunties, rinsing out the structure, washing away my topmost epidermis, the demise of my scalp, for the last time. Boy! It hurt, man. A zonto in down memory lane. I don't know how I did it so many times, only to pick my scalp of the melted skin fused to my hair for weeks later. Hmm. The love led me to scissors. Scissors to patience. Patience to learning. Learning to community. My hair journey started with my mum and her persistence. I love you, thank you. The constant interruption of my childhood activities. I had plastic houses to build, Barbies to put in order of most to least played with, feet to tie to hands, why were you calling me? To play with your hair. I'm now glad you did. Helping undo braids. Seeing how the three strands came apart showed me how I was to intertwine them, working them from the end to the start. You grew this curiosity in me, taking down your braids, cane rowing your natural hair, playing with the attachment in it till a time where you could go to work with it proudly. I was proud too, one of my first sources of such in myself. Oh, curls, coils and kinks, what you've done for me, what you're doing for me, 
what you will go on to do for me. Before I could ask the questions I would have with this mind in my head, my granny passed away. I'd have asked of the origins of community, vine-like prepped and wrapped around me, diffusing into my aura the instincts and images of mineral-enriched rouge clay, the deepest earth tone whittled beads, adornments with glinting stalks of ginger coral. I have my memories with her and the things she passed down to me. She nurtured my curiosity and taught me to see past the things I learned in school. She understood medicinal barks and herbs from Yoruba land, Igbo land and Hausa land and beyond. I wish I remembered what she would bring with her. She trained as a nurse in both Nigeria and the UK, as well as growing up in the village, overflowing with information. She showed me how to make Agbo. I am the sum of beings come before. The choices, the knowledge of those beings, steeped from brain, synced with blood. The experiences gathered by those earlier in my line flows through to the latest existence of selves. The will to experiment, a point signature material and shaping, the spiral of life guiding me along. Oh, curls, coils and kinks, what you've done for me, what you're doing for me, what you will go on to do for me. Through the women I've lovingly waited for, I am meeting myself time and time again. I'm soothed and smoothed by the balm of women holding me down, sealing my frayed edges with attentive care and consideration. The information flows freely between us. We bond and fuse through the medium of hair, getting back to our roots, learning to love self, similar spectrum of those no longer ignored. Those with strongest bonds to me have hair as one of our pillars. Obviously, in tandem with a bit more. The back and forth, sharing village tale health tips that later go on to be scientifically supported. It's a blessing to finally find and appreciate people that are on my wave about these things. I'm blessed to have a sister receptive to the love I have for her. Pictures flow of self-care and creation. It glows in my chest. Virgin hair thriving. Dreadlocks requested. The undoing being done. I love to see it. These rituals are not new. This love is not new. This glory is not new. It's unearthed. Man, I miss them. Being physically close to my tribe. Stupid COVID. Oh, curls, coils and kinks. What you've done for me, what you're doing for me, what you will go on to do for me. As Ialawo Solange says, this shit is for us. Some shit you can't touch. Unless you truly know how. All right, okay, I need a shower. Meg? Meg, is the shower free? I'll go check. Classic Jenny. If I know our Jenny, she'll be in there, having a bit of me time, sat on the toilet, lid down, having a pop at the patriarchy. Hey, what do you think of my outfit? I mean, it's been that long since I got dressed up. I feel like I just can't judge it anymore. Is this too much? It is Christmas though, isn't it? So, hey, you guys getting dressed up. Go on. You've still got time. Jen? I don't even know why I did dry January. It's an absolute waste of my time. I could have just done a run in fucking April like everyone else. Captain Tom Moore's got his own brand of gin. Hmm? Jenny? Just a minute! Jenny? 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 Jenny?
you remember when those celebrities made those videos singing Imagine, black and white, directly to camera on like day three of the original lockdown? Well, I think that Jenny might just have the perfect antidote to that. I mean, if she'll ever answer this door. Jenny! Listen, this woman's place is not in the home. This woman's place is in a theatre or a beach bar or a club in Berlin. I miss being squashed. I miss crowds. I miss my makeup sweating off in some karaoke hotbox, screaming my heart out, getting share wrong, while the room full of people scream along, getting share wrong with me. As a non-religious person, I spend quite a lot of time trying to find secular spaces to build connection, that kind of euphoria and an awe for the world and the people in it. And when life's a little bit of a shit show, say there is a deadly virus plaguing the earth, I want to feel like I'm not on my own. I want to feel like there's people with me somehow, helping me to mark stuff, helping me to celebrate the good stuff amongst all the brutal. So, I take matters into my own hands. And during the month of July, I transform my shower into my personal karaoke booth, as you can see. Um, so at nine o'clock every morning, I'd wake up and I'd sing a song to one of my best friends, um, a song that they had chosen and that we kind of could sing along at the same time. This December, I brought it back, lockdown two, uh, but I brought it back for the Carol Oakey edition. Carol singing, and raising money for charity at the same time, uh, raising money for Greater Manchester Rape Crisis. It's been a bit of a year of needs must. And if your office is in your front room, your gym's in your back room, I would look no further than your shower for all of your spiritual needs. It's got all your mod cons. It's got an optional pretend microphone, generous acoustics, lock on the door, your own personal sanctuary. Uh, decorate to your own personal taste. I've gone in for a golden shimmer curtain or a golden shower, if you will. So because it's girl gang and in the spirit of celebrating the good things against the brutal, I hope you'll join me from my shower to yours. Women 
can say to read. I'm Howard Sanders, President of C. I'm a how much shit heterosexual women put up with because we've been persuaded that we need the love and appreciation of men like from your first disney film you're taught that your pinnacle achievement will be finding a man who loves you enough to stay with you forever ariel gives up being a literal mermaid to be with eric who she has known for three days and the annoying thing is that i kind of believe it I've read feminist literature, I've been married and divorced, but there's still part of me that thinks I need the approval and love of men. Wild. In fact, the opposite is true. The men need us. It's not surprising, actually, that we have to be socialised from the age of two to believe that we need their approval, because otherwise, why would we put up with all the shit that we do? I run this page. Tinder translators. I did a poll and I asked the women have you ever had to mother your partner? 90% of them said yes. 90%. There was this one woman who every day she has to remind her husband to shower, brush his teeth and put on deodorant. And then she said, we've got two kids together, I'm too far gone now. Like she's resigned to it being her job to bring up two actual children and one man-child who apparently can't remember to brush his own teeth. Like, how do you forget regularly to brush your own teeth? How? Well, this opened up a whole big conversation about how women mother their partners. I use the term partner loosely, by the way. I asked women who are in relationships right now, and 75% of them, 75%, this is not okay. If you're unfamiliar with what mothering your partner means, first of all, congratulations. Secondly, here are a few examples. Remembering birthdays and buying all the presents, right? Like, why do I have to remember your mum's birthday now? Am I your PA? She's not my mum and I'm not yours. I spent nine years buying all the presents for my partner's family. And it wasn't even that he asked me to do it. It just became my role. I quite liked how it impressed them that I had good girlfriend slash wife skills. Ugh, ugh. How many of you have bought gifts for your partner's family this year? And how many gifts has your partner bought for your family? Interesting. 
reminding him of things like going to the dentist or organising shopping trips for the things he needs. A grown man. When we go away, I pack for everyone in the house. <laughs> Do any men pack for their children? Like there must be some in the world, right? <sighs> Never heard of one. Being the manager of all the domestic chores. This is such a big one. There's this thing, right, called the mental load. It's, it's like, even if you don't have to do all the chores yourself, you have to know what chores need doing, who needs to do them and when. It takes up so much mental space that it's just exhausting. And most of the mental load is carried by women. Organising every aspect of the life of our son. Doctor, dentist, vaccinations, nursery, school. <laughs> this one really gets my goat. Mothers feel this stuff so deeply when it goes wrong or when it doesn't get done. My ex forgot to take our son to his settling in day at primary school. And I felt awful because I didn't remind him, even though it was his day and he knew the date. The thing about motherhood and fatherhood is that the bars are set differently. Being a great mother is like here. Being a great father is like... What do people even mean when they say great father? Oh, he attends his child's school functions. He plays with his own children. He makes dinner. He's interested in his child's life. I think when people say a great dad, he's a great dad, what they actually mean is he's almost like a mum. <laughs> Teach him how to talk about feelings. One woman said she listens to her husband's phone conversations so that she can remember where he said he'll be and remind him. I flossed his teeth for him. I think that one's on her, don't you? Hmm. I literally organised his entire life. He required help doing every appointment or aspect of adulting. So many of the replies said this or something to that effect. There were women out there, so many of them expected to work a full-time job, manage the entire domestic sphere, be great mothers, and apparently parent their life partner. Meanwhile, the men, I mean, there's this whole narrative, isn't there, about how men are just bad at housework. Oh, they just don't see mess. It's just not how their brains work. But I'm pretty sure, right, that some men live alone. And I'm almost certain that some men run actual countries. <laughs> it's like the biggest swindle ever. We've been convinced that men aren't capable of looking after themselves in the home, but somehow they're more capable of running the world. It's like they can be CEOs of multinational corporations and leaders of most nation states. They need to be reminded that it's their mum's birthday and they should buy her flowers, but they can have the nuclear codes. They need somebody to buy their underwear for them, but they can be the head of mergers and acquisitions. I mean, what? It just makes me want to smash things. Larry? Hello? She was fine down there just a minute ago and now she's got the Edith Piaf on. I mean, great voice, but it's never really a good sign, is it? And definitely not party appropriate. We'd best go and check on her.
Come in. Have you got anything on your feet? I mean, it has been risk assessed, so come in. Take a seat. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit anxious. I know this because late last night I cut my fringe without looking at it. Hmm. So tonight we are celebrating stuff that doesn't normally get celebrated. We are going to raise glasses, make toasts and smash them against the wall. So for the last few weeks, I have been collecting your mistakes, trouble, heartache, things that you'd rather forget. And tonight, they are going to be commemorated in this cathartic ritual. I've used the cloak of the internet for your anonymous confessions that are about to be revealed. My name's Lowry. It's a little bit hard to pronounce. Well, actually, it's not that hard to pronounce but you probably will and I probably won't correct you. It's not quite how I imagined on my own, on the internet. I don't think that should get in the way of us feeling a little bit close this evening. Um, in fact, I was in a long distance relationship for 10 years. So I'm very good at being closer than I'm meant to be. And also, why that thing like the space-time continuum get in the way of us being really close tonight? So if you're up for it, come a little nearer. Um, first thing, you're going to need to get yourself a drink, if only to stop me technically drinking alone. So go on, get yourself something exquisite and cold, unless it's tea. Go on, treat yourself. I'll just sit here and talk for a bit. Go on, get yourself a drink. You see, I'd normally get a drink for you. I'm a very good host. I don't think I'm alone in saying that. You know, it's in the detail, like, which fruit for which drink? Which glass? I mean, personal preference. Something impractical with a gold rim and always top up the glasses, you know. In my house, everyone's glass is always half full. It's also quite good because I find it really difficult to sit still, so being a host is an acceptable way to not sit down all night. I like it in films when they say, Fix yourself a drink. It sounds so American and adult. I like the clink of glasses. I like the crack of an ice cube. <gasps> Cheers. You've got a drink? Next, we're going to need a waft. Or a waft. Is it waft or waft? I don't know, but that is what we're going to create. So you'll need to grab something close to hand, maybe a, a magazine or a placemat or a cushion or a newspaper. Um, and you're going to make a sweeping, waving gesture to create your own waft. Okay, give it a go. Yeah, be careful with the naked flame. Um, let's try that again. That is what it feels like when I brush past you. One last time, in the opposite direction if you can. That is what it feels like when I leave a room. <laughs> Are you feeling a little bit closer yet? I hope so. I hope you're already mispronouncing my name. In fact, I hope you've already forgotten it. That is how close we are going to get tonight. Last thing we can do is if you take your hand, give your fingers a little wiggle. This is just the warm up. And then place your hand on your face. Hmm. That's it, not too hard or too soft. Close your eyes if you like. 
slow down. Tip your head into your hand. Hold your face like it's the most precious thing in the world. Like it's the end of the night. Like I would. You're here, in my dining room, in my shared house, in the Northern Hemisphere. It's not like I imagined. To absent friends. And that's another thing you can do. It's customary with a toast to repeat the tail ends of what's just been said. So to absent friends. This is party of mass destruction and a main event is about to happen and it will happen very quickly. I invite you to join in, to raise your glass, to take a sip and to mutter something completely incomprehensible. Lean in, step back, but please, leave the smashing to the professionals. Raise your glass. To Alex and to being made redundant. To Amy, who fell in love with a manipulative and shallow To Paul, and calling your neighbour Kath for four years and recently learning that her name is in fact. To Gaz, I missed opportunities, but not regrets. To Elizabeth, who during a year of anthropological fieldwork fell in love with a boy who she later learned via ceremonial procession already had a girlfriend. To Sharon, and to receiving gorgeous attention from the opposite sex, but being too afraid. To being old, and not having many stories to tell. To KJ, whose little family will not be getting back together. To wasting two years raising an emotionally unavailable. To choosing nights in over nights out, never again. To Rosa, who made some mistakes whilst knitting. To Elaine, whose dreams have been haunted and successes undermined for 40 years by a workplace bully she never called out. To being too nice to complete assholes. You know, in 2018, I was the angriest I have ever been. My relationship ended and I smashed all the glass in the house. I smashed so much glass that I backed myself into a corner and I couldn't cross the floor. It looked like a smash of an ice rink. I don't remember much about the night. I think that's the nature of anger. But I believe that in the end, I got carried over the pieces. And I know that when one thing breaks, a million new pieces get made.
Cheers. It's not how I imagined. It's way better than that. Hey, that sounds like a second wave. Are you coming? Come on. never seen so much of my own living room. It is mad though when you think about it that it quite literally took a global pandemic to make things a bit more accessible for those who are used to being at home a lot. They've tried to market Covid to us as the great equaliser, when in actual fact it's only served to demonstrate just how unequal we all still really are. And staying home doesn't mean the same thing to anyone. Homes can be pretty complicated places for lots of people, full of big messy feelings, good and bad. And the difference between safety and comfort and fear and danger was really highlighted through each lockdown period, when the matching cases of home-baked banana bread and digital yoga subscriptions were matched by the rising cases of domestic violence. This year has shaken us to our foundation. It's demonstrated that the old way is not the only way and really should never have been the way at all. What we're presented with is a glorious opportunity to build something new together. So whatever you've managed to achieve this year, whether that is hold it together or totally lose the plot, stay home or plow on, we think you've bloody smashed it. Whether you're a woman whose comfort zone is in the home or whether you felt totally stifled well done because most of us are just doing our best really aren't we so this festive period have some fun joy is an act of rebellion the revolution isn't worth having if it doesn't include dancing so what we want for christmas is to dismantle the capitalist patriarchy destroy white supremacy ableism classism fat phobia transphobia but bear with us we're working on it and we hope you are too for now, a dance with our mates will do very nicely. And given the current climate, a socially distanced disco will have to do. So, all we want for Christmas is for you to get up and dance.